Okay. Um, well, hi, everyone. Um, it's great to be here today. Um, many thanks to uh, Dr. Piasecki uh, and his team. Uh, many thanks to Agnieszka for her organizing um, this session. And uh, a big congratulations to, to the team on your uh, successfully funded project. Uh, it's a great privilege to be here, too, with uh, Drs. Morsey and Proferis. Um, I will be uh, providing some brief uh, remarks and then uh, moderating the session. Um, I'm going to ask that you hold your questions. Um, we, you can send them in throughout uh, the session uh, and then we'll address questions at, at the end. Um, I just wanted to just uh, say that I have no uh, conflicts of interest related to this activity and any opinions or, or comments or recommendations uh, to, that I express today are mine and do not uh, reflect my employer, uh, Marshfield Clinic Research Institute, Marshfield Clinic Health System. And um, like many people, you may have some unofficial disclosures. Um, Zelda and Wally are very quiet so far today. They're, they're peaceful and it's a fairly rainy, cloudy day uh, here in Wisconsin, which is the little red area that you see there. And so um, typically though, as you know, we've all been working from home now for, for many, many months. And uh, as soon as I start a presentation, of course the, the mail or the post shows up and the dogs go crazy. So that's just my my, my warning in, in case uh, we have a visit from Wally and Zelda. Um. So, so as Jan said, um, I, I've been working in this space for for um, over twenty years, and I, I think the 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 research that's taking place in what we call uh, you know the internet um, in its broadest terms I, I think we're really seeing just growing complexity um, a number of years ago my colleague uh, Michael Zimmer and I uh, were approached to do an entry for the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy and so we just finished our third substantive revision um, just this year 2021 but what I what I was thinking about when when planning for this session is uh, is going back to the, the initial uh, definition that we came up with um, back in 2011, 2012, when we first put the, this entry together. And, and I think it still holds true. Um, conceptually and historically, internet research ethics is most related to computer and information ethics. It includes such ethical issues as participant knowledge and consent, data privacy, security, anonymity, confidentiality, integrity of data, IP issues, uh, community, disciplinary, and professional standards or, or norms. And, and since this, since early work, uh, again, looking back into the, the, the 1990s even, um, some questions have, have emerged. And, and I, I kind of jokingly said so many questions uh, on this slide, but these are just some of the questions that, that we've identified over the years, uh, some early on in our, our, our first iterations of IRE uh, research. But as, as we glance at this list, um, it, it really is growing in complexity. Uh, Jan mentioned the, the um, when we were talking earlier uh, about the uh, new J, uh, GDPR and you know researchers are now facing uh, so many different um, um, complexities as we work in these different spaces and and I would say that the early questions those that had to do with issues of what is what is public what is private those questions have certainly not gone away and I would say they certainly haven't been uh, resolved to any great degree of, of, of confidence. And, and I would say to the contrary, many of those issues uh, that we identified way back when um, have, have just grown either in intensity or, or in complexity. And, and I think it's fair to say that as we think about social media, we think about big data, machine learning, AI, those those have have stirred the pot of questions and and I think now we're we're at a point where we're seeing such complex considerations in internet based internet uh, broadly speaking research that that we're pushing very very heavily back on on epistemic and, and normative constraints and I think as we as our our collective interdependency on social media ha has grown over the years our relationship with trust, truth, uh, representation has also dramatically changed. And, you know, I, I, I think it's funny, we go back all the time to this, you know, silly ca uh, cartoon from the 1990s 
about anonymity, right? Anonymity on the internet. Nobody knows you're a dog. But but think about where we are now, and and we're in the space of of, of we've moved from that notion of anonymity to uh, precise levels of identification, to a prospective model uh, modeling of behaviors of of prediction uh, of of prediction. And, and it almost seems seamless, right? Um, that these transitions have happened, you know, from, from that space of anonymity to where we are now. And, I, and yet the ethics of the, the transition, they're really, the ethics are enormous. Excuse me. And um, a few years ago, I, I wrote a short response in um, in Public Library of Science, and um, we talked about. I, I was responding to an article that used a form of network network uh, social network analysis called iterative vertex clustering and classification, and IVCC. Um, and the the article was talking about using that that model uh, to identify specific populations in large data sets. And and I went back and forth with the authors, and and you know. It was a really fruitful conversation where we talked about methods and ethics and and how do we front load ethics in these kinds of research uh, methods um, it also got me thinking about the 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 true methodological power uh, that we as researchers have at, at our disposal uh, today and and going forward I think that that power will increase um, so as researchers working in on in between uh, spaces on on our internets today I we have we have unbelievable access to data. But I also want to remind us remind us of the risks that that we also take as as researchers in these spaces and and I think uh, you know we only need to think over uh, the past you know five to ten years of some of the the, the famous or, or infamous cases of studies gone wrong to think about the the risks that possibly uh, could occur. Um, so. As, as as I read more about Jan and, and his team and and this project, and as they engage on on this very ambitious project, they are going to be facing a tremendous ethical, regulatory, disciplinary challenges, and and so you know what what does a research team do? Where do you begin when you talk about front loading ethics? Well. In, uh, from a Western perspective, right, we would say, well, we start at the Belmont report. We think about how we treat our participants in research. We think about um, risks and harms, and we think about the the benefits uh, of, of research and also the burdens of research. Um, but I also want to suggest that we think about uh, a, an old an old document, another old document um, on being a scientist that really talks about the values uh, that that are. Um, essential to our work as scientists and, and that uh, we honor the trust that colleagues place in us, that we honor an obligation uh, to do the best work possible and to embrace productive and honest work. And then this last one, to uphold an obligation to act in ways that serve the public. And I, I think it's it's really in that last point where I was thinking about the web Im immunization project as really critical. And recently, I was I was talking with a, a library system about distinctions of of mis and disinformation. And so, as, as this team is starting this this project, looking at at dis, at misinformation, um, you know what what are they going to uncover? And what I what I hope what I really hope from this team, and I have great expectations uh, for this project, is um, I, I'm hopeful that that empirical research that empirical research looking at these forms of rhetoric looking at empirical uh, data around misinformation disinformation i'm really hopeful that that's going to uh, contribute to a healthier discourse um, i hope our, our our citizenry is is better informed as a result of the work that's going to be done excuse me okay so just a few more comments um I think we do know a lot more about the ethics of conducting internet research or, or research on Twitter um, than we did just just a few years ago. I think we've really come a long way, um, particularly from some of the work that, that Nick Proferis has done. Um, I, I think we're really starting to understand those 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 very uh, complex tensions that exist in those spaces of public and private and what do participants uh, expect. 
um, there there is a substantial literature across disciplines, but a, a trend that I've I've seen and and I've heard uh, in many conference pre uh, presentations, and, and I think it's a little confounding um, for, for ethicists and and for uh, for cer for some um, researchers that that there's this presumed public nature of Twitter that that's kind of become this default position. And, and I, I think we, we still need to tease that out. Um, regulatorily, I, I think that that probably is um, the correct um, framing of, of Twitter data. However, um, what about the ethics piece, right? Um, I'm also concerned about the, the ways in which uh, that public nature enables us to, you know, within, uh, you know, an hour or two, you know, get a, develop an API, operate, you know, get this API to, to, uh, to, to grab all sorts of data for us, right? It can um, enable, we can have all sorts of research projects, you know, acting very quickly. And so I, I, I said this a, a number of years ago about these spaces that the shifting research landscape is complex, that the fact that data are coming from these myriad of sources, some of them intentional and some of them unintentional. I'm concerned too around uh, about the concept of research bystanders or, or collateral subjects as, as sometimes called um, in these streams of data that, that get scooped up. Uh, one, uh, one's, one's connections in a social media landscape do matter, right? They do matter, um, even if those, those connections are distant or impersonal. Human subjects research, uh, uh, broadly understood, um, is fund, it is or should be fundamentally different in the age of data science. However, from a U.S. regulatory perspective, the regulations really haven't kept up. They still haven't kept up with, with the, the age of data science, despite the rule revision in 2018. Um, methods such as IVCC rely on continuous data streams and, and continuous analytics, and many of these data mining and analytic studies would be considered um, secondary analyses. And the degree to which a researcher has access to identifiable data or the ability to ascertain information about individuals through, for example, re-identification techniques are used then as, as determinants, right, of the level of risk and benefit in the current U.S. regulatory model. So I just want to wrap up with a, a few words um, from a regulatory perspective. Uh, in the U.S., we did have a rule change in 2018. And I, I think a lot of researchers were, were hopeful that the revised common rule um, would address some of the technological changes taking place to some little, little degree they did. Um, I think most of us didn't quite see the, the changes that we expected. Um, but when we talk about these kinds of large data sets, um, we, we kind of have two different paths here from a U.S. regulatory perspective. We, we either fall completely outside of the common rule definition of human subjects research, um, and that the, our definition is uh, a living individual about whom an investigator, whether professional or student conducting research, obtains information through intervention or interaction with an individual and uses studies or analyzes the information. I'm leaving out the biospecimen piece for now. Or obtains, uses studies, analyzes, or generates identifiable private information. So, so the path would be, okay, does this, does this data set, for example, comprise human subjects research? If, if not, it, it, there's, no, there's no ethical oversight, right? It's, it's outside of the purview of the ethics committee or the IRB. If we agree that it does fit that definition of, of human subjects research, the next step would be, okay, what kind of research is it? Typically, the types of research we're talking about today would qualify for what's called an exempt determination status. And, and once that determination status is, is, uh, is exempt, that means IRB oversight effectively ends. So again, we're back to a point of there's no IRB or ethics committee oversight. And, and are we comfortable with that from, from a research uh, perspective? Um, typically what we would see, we would see that research in this vein would fall into an exemption four criteria, which is um, about secondary use of identifiable private information. 
And, and this brings us right back to those questions that we started with, right? Well, okay, what is identifiable private information on Twitter? Is there such a thing? Or are we gonna go with that, that perspective that it is de facto public? So I, I, I leave us with that um, to think about these regulatory issues that use, use words um, uh, like when identifiable materials are publicly available. So we're back again squarely to the public space. Is Twitter uh, writ large a public, uh, a public space? And so I, I wanna leave us with those couple of lingering questions about public and private. Um, I'm, I think we still have, uh, it's, it's great, we all, this is job security, I think, because we all have so much more to, con, to, to learn about uh, um, internet research ethics writ large, and the ethics and the regulations, I, I don't ever feel that, that they're going to be completely in sync. So that puts the onus back on us as researchers operating in an unregulated space um, to do the right thing. I, I, I think it's pretty clear ethics and regulations, you know, aren't always in the same sandbox. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over uh, to my colleague, Dr. Morsey, and um, we're going to um, talk through some machine learning and some ethics.